1977, Voyager 1 left Earth carrying less computing power than a modern calculator, a fragile radio signal, and a mission that was supposed to last just a few years. More than 45 years later, it is still speaking. Not only that, it is sending back data from a region of space no human-made object was ever expected to study in real time. Data so unusual that a Nobel Prize winning scientist has now stepped forward to warn the scientific community that something about our understanding of deep space may be fundamentally incomplete. Voyager 1 is operating far beyond its intended lifespan, beyond the edge of the solar system, inside an environment that was supposed to be quiet, predictable, and well understood. Instead, it is anything but. And what Voyager 1 is detecting now may force science to confront a reality we were never prepared for. The Voyager missions were only possible because of a rare alignment of the outer planets, an alignment that happens roughly once every 176 years. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune lined up in such a way that a spacecraft could hop from one planet to the next using gravity itself as propulsion. This was known as the Grand Tour. Without this alignment, Voyager would have required an impossibly large rocket and vast amounts of fuel. Instead, engineers used gravity assists, allowing the spacecraft to steal momentum from each planet, accelerating it outward step by step. What makes this even more remarkable is how precise everything had to be. A tiny navigational error early on could have ruined the entire mission. Yet Voyager 1 executed its trajectory with astonishing accuracy, flying past Jupiter, then Saturn, and finally being flung upward and out of the plane of the planets. That final maneuver set Voyager 1 on a one-way path toward interstellar space, a path no spacecraft had ever taken before. At the time, nobody expected it to still be working when it got there. Voyager 1 survives today because it was built differently. Instead of solar panels, it relies on radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RTGs, which convert the heat from decaying plutonium-238 into electricity. This design allows the spacecraft to function where sunlight is almost non-existent. Even so, the available power has been declining steadily for decades. Engineers have had to shut down instruments, heaters, and backup systems one by one, carefully rationing every remaining watt. And yet, against all expectations, Voyager 1 continues to transmit usable scientific data. Its signal, weaker than a household light bulb, travels more than 20 hours across space before being captured by NASA's Deep Space Network. Many experts believed that by now, thermal stress, radiation damage, or simple component failure would have ended the mission. That didn't happen. Instead, Voyager 1 kept going, pushing its instruments into regions they were never designed to study. After crossing the heliopause in 2012, Voyager 1 entered interstellar space, the region beyond the sun's protective influence. This environment was expected to be relatively stable and well-behaved, but the data didn't match expectations. Voyager detected unexpected plasma wave activity, unusual particle behavior, and magnetic field characteristics that did not fully align with existing models. Even more surprising, it continued sending coherent, meaningful measurements from an environment thought to be too harsh and too distant for such an old spacecraft to survive. A Nobel Prize-winning physicist has now warned that this persistence, combined with the anomalies in the data, suggests our models of the heliosphere and interstellar space may be incomplete. The impossible discovery is not one dramatic object or signal. It is the realization that interstellar space is more dynamic, more structured, and more interactive than we believed, and that Voyager 1 is still capable of revealing that fact decades after its mission should have ended. Voyager 1 was never supposed to become an interstellar observatory. It was never meant to survive long enough to test theories about the boundary between stars. And yet, here it is, still sending data, still challenging assumptions, still forcing scientists to revisit ideas that were once considered settled. Every new transmission is a reminder that the universe does not always behave according to our timelines or expectations. Sometimes the most important discoveries come not from new technology, but from old machines pushed far beyond their limits. Voyager 1 is now operating on borrowed time. Its power will eventually fade. Its voice will fall silent. But before that happens, it is still rewriting our understanding of where the solar system ends, how the galaxy interacts with us, 
and how much we still don't know. To understand why this discovery is being called impossible, you have to understand what scientists expected from interstellar space. The region beyond the heliopause was assumed to be relatively calm, predictable, and slow-changing. Models described it as a quiet medium shaped mainly by ancient supernovae and large-scale galactic forces, not something that would actively interact with a tiny spacecraft built in the 1970s. Voyager 1 was never designed to operate there. Its instruments were calibrated for the solar environment, not for interstellar plasma. Its systems were not hardened for decades of exposure to galactic radiation. Its power budget was not meant to support meaningful science this far from home. And yet the spacecraft is still returning structured, interpretable data. Plasma oscillations, particle measurements, magnetic field readings, not noise, not random signals, real science. The impossibility is not that something strange exists out there. The impossibility is that we are still able to measure it at all. When a Nobel Prize winning scientist issues a warning about Voyager 1's findings, it is not because the spacecraft detected something sensational or dramatic. It is because the data quietly undermines confidence. The warning is subtle but profound. If our best models cannot fully explain what Voyager 1 is measuring at the boundary of interstellar space, then those models may be incomplete in ways that scale far beyond one mission. This is not a localized problem. It affects how we understand cosmic radiation, magnetic shielding, and the long-term safety of planetary systems. It affects how we think about interstellar travel. It affects how we evaluate habitability, not just around our sun, but around other stars as well. The Nobel warning is not panic, it is caution. A reminder that when reality refuses to match prediction, it is prediction that must change. One of the most important messages coming from Voyager 1 is that interstellar space is not a passive void. The plasma wave data suggests an environment that vibrates, responds, and carries energy across vast distances. The particle measurements show interactions that were thought to be minimal. The magnetic field appears structured in ways that blur the line between inside and outside the solar system. This implies that the heliosphere does not end cleanly. Instead, it fades into a region of interaction, where solar and galactic influences overlap and compete. In other words, the solar system does not simply stop. It dissolves. Voyager 1 is operating in that dissolved region, a place science assumed would be far less interesting than it actually is. Perhaps the most unsettling aspect of all is timing. Voyager 1 is revealing complexities in interstellar space at a moment when humanity is technologically incapable of responding to them. We cannot send another probe quickly. We cannot reposition Voyager. We cannot repair or upgrade it. The data arrives decades before we can act on it. This creates a gap between knowledge and capability. We now know that interstellar space is more dynamic, more interactive, and more challenging than we assumed, but we do not yet have the tools to explore it properly. Voyager 1 is a messenger from the future, delivering information that belongs to an era of spaceflight we have not reached yet. And that is what makes the discovery truly impossible. Not because it exists, but because it arrived before we were ready. One of the quiet assumptions that Voyager 1 destroyed is the idea that space is divided into neat regions. Solar system here, interstellar space there, a border you cross and leave one environment behind. Reality does not work that way. Voyager 1's data suggests that the transition zone is messy, layered, and unstable. Solar influence does not simply stop. Galactic influence does not instantly take over. Instead, there is a region of overlap where forces interact in ways that are difficult to separate. Magnetic fields align when they shouldn't. Particle populations mix. Plasma behaves inconsistently across different scales. This means that what we call interstellar space may not begin where we think it does. The discovery is not a new object. It is the realization that our categories are artificial. Voyager 1 didn't just cross a boundary. It exposed how poorly defined that boundary really is. At first glance, this might seem like an academic problem, a puzzle for heliophysicists, something that only affects one aging probe drifting through deep space. That would be a mistake. The structure of the heliosphere determines how much galactic radiation reaches Earth. It shapes the environment of every planet in the solar system. 
It influences long-term climate stability, atmospheric chemistry, and even biological mutation rates. If the heliosphere is thinner, more porous, or more variable than we believed, then Earth's radiation environment is less stable than assumed. Not today, not tomorrow, but over geological and cosmic timescales. Voyager 1 confirms that our planetary safety depends on structures we do not fully understand. And that realization extends to every star system in the galaxy. Another key insight from Voyager 1's measurements is that interstellar space is not simply something we expand into. It pushes back. The pressure exerted by the interstellar medium appears strong enough to shape, compress, and possibly distort the heliosphere. This means the solar system is not just moving through space, it is interacting with it dynamically. Think of it less like a ship in calm water and more like a submarine navigating unpredictable currents. The surrounding medium matters. This changes how we think about long-term interstellar travel. Any future spacecraft will not just coast through emptiness. It will pass through environments with structure, pressure, and resistance. Voyager 1 is revealing this not in theory, but in practice. Perhaps the most important aspect of the Nobel warning is psychological rather than technical. Science advances by confidence. Confidence in models. Confidence in predictions. Confidence that when we build something and send it far enough, it will behave more or less as expected. Voyager 1 has shaken that confidence, not by producing chaos, but by producing data that refuses to fit comfortably. Data that is not wrong, but inconvenient. Data that demands humility. The impossible discovery is not that the universe is strange. We always knew that. The impossible discovery is that after 45 years, with outdated technology, fading power, and no ability to adapt, Voyager 1 is still capable of teaching us that our understanding remains incomplete, and that realization lands harder than any single anomaly ever could. One of the most uncomfortable moments in science is when data outlives theory. Not because the data is wrong, but because the theory quietly stops explaining it. That is exactly where Voyager 1 has placed us. The spacecraft is returning measurements that are internally consistent, stable over time, and reproducible. There is no indication of instrument failure or random noise. The readings make sense on their own. What fails is the framework we use to interpret them. This creates a rare situation. Scientists are forced to accept results that cannot yet be comfortably integrated into existing models. You can't dismiss them, you can't ignore them, and you can't fully explain them. Voyager 1 is no longer testing hypotheses. It is exposing the edges of our understanding. Before Voyager crossed the heliopause, many scientists believed the basic structure of the solar system's boundary was a solved problem. Details remained, but the big picture felt secure. Voyager 1 proved that assumption premature. The Nobel warning is rooted in this exact mistake. The danger is not that we don't know enough. The danger is that we believed we already knew enough. Once a question is labeled settled, exploration slows, funding shifts, curiosity narrows. Voyager 1 reopened a chapter science had mentally closed, and it did so from a distance we cannot easily revisit. This is not a failure of science. It is a reminder of its vulnerability to certainty. Voyager 1 is not just an isolated success story. It is a test case for every future mission that hopes to leave the solar system. If interstellar space is more dynamic, more interactive, and more structured than we assumed, then spacecraft design, shielding, communication, and navigation all become harder problems. Radiation exposure may vary unpredictably. Magnetic environments may interfere with instruments. Assumptions about quiet cruising through empty space no longer hold. Voyager 1 didn't just discover something strange. It rewrote the risk profile of interstellar travel. Any future probe will inherit these uncertainties, whether we like it or not. There is a final, deeply humbling asymmetry revealed by Voyager 1. We can send machines outward far faster than we can send understanding with them. A spacecraft can leave the solar system in decades. It can survive for generations, but interpretation lags behind. Voyager 1 is now operating in a regime where we cannot send replacements cannot adjust instruments, and cannot directly test competing explanations. We receive the data passively, delayed by more than 20 hours, and do our best to make sense of it from afar. 
This means the universe is always one step ahead of us. Voyager 1 confirms something quietly unsettling. Exploration does not guarantee comprehension. Sometimes it only guarantees that the questions become more difficult. Voyager 1 did not make an impossible discovery because it found something supernatural or sensational. It made an impossible discovery because it survived long enough to prove that our certainty was premature. After 45 years in space, operating with outdated technology, fading power, and no possibility of repair, Voyager 1 is still delivering something far more valuable than images or numbers. It is delivering doubt. Productive, uncomfortable doubt. The Nobel warning is not about panic. It is about humility. It is about recognizing that the boundary of our solar system is not clean, not quiet, and not fully understood. That interstellar space is not an empty backdrop, but an active environment that pushes back, interacts, and reshapes what we thought were stable cosmic structures. That our protective bubble is thinner, more dynamic, and more conditional than we assumed. Voyager 1 confirmed what we all feared, but rarely admitted. That our understanding of the universe is always provisional. The spacecraft didn't fail, our assumptions did. And there is something deeply poetic about that. A machine built in the 1970s, powered by decaying plutonium, speaking to us across billions of miles, reminding us that exploration does not end with answers. It ends with better questions. Voyager 1 will go silent one day. Soon, its signal will fade, its instruments will shut down, and it will continue drifting through the galaxy without ever knowing what it changed. But the warning it sent back will remain, that the universe is more complex than our models, that certainty is fragile, and that even after 45 years, space can still surprise us in ways we were never ready for. If this story changed how you see Voyager, the solar system, or our place in the cosmos, let me know in the comments. And if you want to keep following the discoveries that challenge everything we think we know, subscribe. Because the most dangerous moment in science is not ignorance. It's believing we already understand.